This week on Book Feed Unsolved, we will be investigating the mysterious disappearance of the Sawkill Girls, 23 missing person cases over the last few decades, all unsolved and all with no new leads. Sawkill? That's an interesting name. It's um so that all the girls lived on an island called Sawkill Rock, and that is why they are the Sawkill Girls. So do you think it's like a it's like, like family name? Like there was a, a Mr. Sawkill, a Mrs. Sawkill? Madam Sawkill. Madam Sawkill. The first. Maybe. I don't know. Could be. Interesting. It's a, it's a little bit of a sinister name. I guess, yeah. A spooky. Yeah. Ooh. Right. Well, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack in the tragic disappearances of these young girls. So without further ado, let's get into it. Sawkill Rock is an island off the coast of New England, accessible only by boat or plane. Known for its scenic beauty and old money reputation, the rock boasts a strong legacy of local families who have lived there for generations. Residents work and send their children to its public schools, living a fairly isolated life. Sawkill's claim to fame is its racehorses bred at the family-owned Mortimer Farm for generations. Locals describe the rock as, quote, small town, friendly, the sort of place where everybody knows everybody, end quote. But this friendly small town has seen an unusual amount of tragedy over the years. To begin, let's go over the most recent case, which occurred just under a year ago, the disappearance of Thora Keller. Your typical high school junior, Thora is said to have been a sweet girl and a good student. In looking at her school records and personal history, investigators found that she was seemingly an untroubled girl. She got along well with her family and friends and is said to have been an aspiring writer. Wasn't that just always the way? The writers. The writers, yes, but the 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 good children, the uh, the unassuming. I would like to think that any child that gets abducted I, is innocent. Yeah. <laughs> but it's always always the good ones, you know. The good the good ones die young, as they say. Where is that from? I Billy remember Joel? hearing it, in Jimmy Neutron. It's a Billy Joel song. Is it? Yeah. I remember hearing it in the episode of Jimmy Neutron, Sheen says it, and I think they go to Egypt, and I think that they oh, are yeah. in, uh, like, the pyramids. I actually do remember that. Yeah. He's like, well, I must look good. I, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was, like, about a toy, too. It wasn't even, like, something melted. I don't know. I hope it was an Ultra Lord. It wasn't. Oh, good. It might have been. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. As stated... Thora's case is not the only unsolved disappearance on record for the police department of Sawkill Rock. In an interview, Chief of Police Ed Harlow confirmed the Rock currently has 23 missing persons cold cases, all dating back over the last century, all young, local girls like Keller. Harlow refused to answer any further inquiry on details of those other cold cases or make a statement on whether or not progress is being made to locate the lost girls. Harlow has said, quote, there are wild animals on our island, not to mention very dangerous areas on the cliffs where the ground can give way without warning. Please, to all our young people and to any visitors, do not go wandering in the woods after dark. What, uh, what type of wild animals are there on this island? Horses. Evil horses? I, it's New England. They probably have, like, black bears. Ooh, black Maybe, bears. Maybe, um, Ooh. squirrels. We got some I... ghouls. Ghouls? Ghouls. 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 Got a, a pack of ghouls running wild on, on Sawkill Rock? They might. <laughs> that actually, that might come up later. <laughs> oh, my. Stay tuned. <laughs> that being said... If all these cold cases truly are nothing more than tragic accidents, where are the bodies? What really happened to the Sawkill girls? And could their disappearances be linked? Let's get into some theories. The first theory, and one widely believed by the residents of Sawkill Rock and the Sawkill Police Department, is that Thora, and perhaps many of the other girls, simply ran away or fell from one of Sawkill's numerous dangerous cliffs. It continues to be debated if these were suicides or fatal missteps. And how many how many girls are we talking about here? 
23 over the past few decades. 23 is a, a lot of, a lot in, in so many years, you and, know? Yeah, and not to be super sinister, but the 23 are only the ones we have records of. Yeah, 23, too many to be slips. I mean, I'm going to say that. Also, if all 23 were slips, you'd think we would have at least one body. Yeah. Maybe they should put a fence up around these. Do they, do they have a fence? A fence around the whole island. Well, around the, on the cliffs, you know? Like a little barrier. I'm pretty sure. A guardrail. I'm sure there's guardrails at the, at the residential parts, anyway. Yeah, I think maybe, maybe they should invest in some more infrastructure. I did think it was interesting that they mentioned that these girls might have run away because I feel like running away when you live on an island has to be especially difficult. You would have to run away coinciding specifically with a ferry. Yeah. And I can't find any... buy the ticket to the ferry. Yeah, and and then somebody sees you on the ferry, at least, or there's some sort of record, especially with this latest case, Thora Keller, like, there must have been some sort of receipt transaction. Yeah. You know, we're living in an age where everything's recorded, and we have access to those records. It's a tricky case. It is, indeed. Unless she swam to shore. Maybe they're all strong swimmers. Maybe. Those perilous cliffs. Who will swan dive right off? Thor's best friend, Valerie Mortimer of the Mortimer family uh, and their horses, stated that she was very sad to hear about Thor's disappearance, but she wasn't totally surprised. She said the past few weeks Thor had been confiding in her that she was actually very emotionally distressed and things didn't seem like they were going great. Thor's parents have refuted these claims, though, and say that their daughter was incredibly happy in the weeks leading up to her disappearance, though it was notable that she had recently had a uh, social shift I mean, it was high school, you know. Yeah, that she went in high school. It seemed very abruptly to them that she went from hanging out with one group of friends to hanging out with this other group of friends that included Valerie Mortimer. Okay. Um, And actually, her former best friend, the daughter of Police Chief Harlow, Zoe Harlow, has said that she does not think that this was an accident. She thinks her friend fell victim to something far more sinister than simply running away. Got a little intrigue there. And this actually leads us into our second theory, where the ghouls will come in again. Perhaps. That's what we need. The ghouls. This leads us to our second theory, which is admittedly a little more fantastical. Resident Grayson T. reported for a local run on the story that his friend Thora had shown a great interest in local legends of The Collector, a beast hiding in the forests of Sawkill Rock. The rhyme states, Beware of the woods and the dark, dank deep. He'll follow you home and he won't let you sleep. Ooh. It's I like a creepy. good rhyme. I do like a good rhyme as well. It's pretty creepy. Um, a little bit. But is it enough to... I mean, a, a, sh- a, a rhyme. I mean, obviously, I am a fan of this. I movie. don't think that's going to hold up in a court of law. No. 23 missing bodies might. Not without any evidence. Innocent until proven guilty is the motto here in this yeah. country. True. Uh, correlation is not causation. Yeah. However, it is interesting that Thora had such an interest in this creature, and she perhaps fell prey to it. What What is this this creature? Actually, it's really interesting. In doing research on the collector, I couldn't find much more than just that rhyme. There's the idea that, you know, he collects souls or collects young girls. There's a lot of different versions of it, but it really just seems like a folk legend. Yeah. Perhaps a bit like the Jersey Devil, you know? Yeah. Everybody's got their own version of the story. That that doesn't seem to uh, really hold up there. Says you. <laughs> I claim that Thora's intrigue with the nursery rhyme was almost obsessive, and that it was the subject of much of her creative writing. Is it possible Thora Keller fell prey to the beast with which she had been so fascinated? The only real evidence to support this theory is an old children's rhyme and, as you know, 23 missing girls. While there are no eyewitness accounts and most of Sawkill's population is ready to write this off as their own urban legend, the fact remains, no bodies have ever been found. The third theory was posited by former best friend Zoe Harlow and is possibly even more of a conspiracy than the last. Harlow, who is the daughter of Police Chief Harlow, believes that Thora's disappearance, and maybe even all the missing girls, can be traced back to the Mortimer family. 
In the months leading up to Thora's disappearance, Zoe claims that her best friend suddenly began acting strange and out of character. It should be noted that no such claims were made by Thora's other friends or her family. Though her parents did agree, it was strange Thora abruptly cut ties with Zoe and changed friend groups entirely. One member of her new social circle was Valerie Mortimer. See, there's, there's emotions involved there and high school emotions, which are very intricate, you know, the, the old best friend and the new best friend yeah. and we're not going to get along. Looking at the list of missing persons dating back over the past 100 years, it is possible to see the potential correlation Zoe Harlow relies on so heavily in her accusation. The Mortimer family is notable for their unorthodox legacy. A total matriarchy, ownership of the horse farm, and connected fortune has been passed down from mother to daughter for generations. The current holder of the estate is Lucy Mortimer, who inherited it from her mother, Sylvia. I don't know what they did, and I don't know why they did it but I know they did something, said Harlow. Grace Kang, who disappeared in 2002, was another friend of Valerie's. Ivani Mishra, last seen in 1994, was a known associate of Val's mother Lucy, as was Fiona Rochester, who disappeared in 1986. Of course, for such small island population, one would not say that this is completely out of the ordinary. That does actually bring up an interesting point though, uh, while we're talking about the Mortimer family, I did find a really interesting local news heading. This is not super related to Thora's case in any way because it didn't happen until she'd been missing for quite a long time, but it seems like they recently hired a new family to be their housekeeper. Uh, well, the mother is their housekeeper and the daughters Ooh. live on the estate with them. It's the Alt House family. And apparently their arrival caused quite a stir among the local Sock Hill population. Oh, really? Daughter, what, uh, what happened? Daughter Marion Alt House was uh, offered a ride on one of oh. the Mortimer horses. <laughs> well, I hope she had some experience, you know, just let anyone climb onto a horse. I don't know, because the horse threw her. Oh, it, it that's was, no fun. It caused a big scene. I couldn't find any. I'm. She is okay, I know that. Oh, that's good. That's an eventful arrival at yeah, Soft Hill Rock. Definitely. Yeah, so it's just some local news. Local yeah. news here on Book Feed Unsolved. Book Feed Unsolved updates. All right, and that takes us to our fourth and final theory for today, aliens. Oh, God. I'm just saying, I know what you're thinking, but hear me out. This myth of the collector, who just, you know, these bodies vanished without a trace. Maybe they were brought up to space? Maybe they were abducted. I think it's plausible. I think that the collector legend may just be a, a coping mechanism for these people. You know, the, you have these, these people going missing. It's traumatic. You need an excuse. You create a story around it. It's, it's, it's human nature. I think when generation upon generation of local people are telling this story with reverence and, you know, holding it dear. Are they? Maybe not in the case of, like, the teenagers in town. <laughs> I mean, you, you said it yourself, it's always the innocent who get it, you know? Maybe they should show a little more reverence for this thing. I just, I think that that's a little far-fetched. I mean, it's all a little far-fetched. All the details of this case remain murky. We may never truly know what happened to Thora Keller and the other Sock Hill girls. Until more compelling evidence comes to light, the case remains unsolved. Hi guys, thank you for watching this little uh, fun skit spoof of BuzzFeed Unsolved, BookFeed Unsolved. Uh, we hope it wasn't too bad and that you enjoyed it. Really um, sorry, <laughs> Ryan and Shane. <laughs> We did this video to promote this book, Sawkill Hill Girls. So if we have intrigued you as to the mystery of the Sawkill Hill disappearances... Of course we did. <laughs> because we did an amazing job. Pick up this book next week and perhaps some of your questions will be answered. We can't promise that all of them will be answered, but we can promise it's a really good book. Yeah. Very good. All right. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Please you. like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> See you next time, maybe, with another I book. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.